Hi, and thanks for joining me today on the Ology podcast. This is part of a 20 part series on reflexology. You'll be hearing a lot more about reflexology as I talk about it. But first and foremost, you must know it's my absolute favorite modality. And I've been doing massage for 20 years and I'm certified in 12 different modalities. But I taught reflexology at the Colorado School of Healing Arts for several years and it truly is my passion. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is reflexology. How could it help me? And so many of you have issues with structure. So that is skeletal muscle, okay? I'm gonna break this down really, really simply. But first, you must know that reflexology can work everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Muscular, skeletal, emotional, mental, spiritual, lymphatic, endocrine system, uh, the organ system. I mean, it just goes on and on and on from meridians, everything. And oftentimes with zone theory, things crisscross and you're working three or four different points at once. That's also one big, big point. Reflexology is not massage. If you're going to see a reflexologist and they're massaging your feet, that means squeezing, kneading, rolling, doing a bunch of stuff and they're not holding points, then you're not getting reflexology. Because reflexology is specific point work. Really important to know, specific point work. You can always integrate different types of modalities with it, you know, like effleurage, petrissage, potment. But if they're not doing specific point work, then they're not doing reflexology. And reflexology is extremely profound. So we're going to talk about structure and that's always where I start with my clients is you first have to open up everything and then you can dive deep into all of the other stuff. So here's my tootsies, got a little red pedicure and you can see them if I like really put them up to the camera and this here is your spine. In reflexology, there's a few things that use both feet, but then there's a few things that only use the left or the right. For instance, the liver and the spleen would be on different sides. And I'll be getting to that, but today's structure. So we have this in through here. And if you take your thumb and just put it right at the bottom, you're not all the way down here because this point in through here is all attachment stuff and it really doesn't have to do with reflexology. You have your appendix down there, but, but that's about it. So you take your thumb, you put it right there. That's your sacrum. So you have your sacrum, you go up, you have your lumbar, you go up a little bit more, you're gonna need two thumbs for this, thoracic, and then you go up a little bit more, you have cervical. So if you have spine issues, you have to work all So today we're talking about structure reflexology. That means muscular skeletal. And I talked about how the inside of the foot is your spine. So you have your sacrum, thoracic, double thumb, thoracic, and then cervicals. So if you have any kind of spine issues, which most of us do, you need to work this entire region. And see how flexible my foot is? You can move it around, do all kinds of things. That's one thing you have to remember. If you don't have a flexible foot, then you don't have a flexible mind, flexible physical form, or open, present of spirituality and mind-based medicine. So if you have hard feet that are not movable, please see a reflexologist and get a series of 10. It will do you 
so much good. Also, I'm going to mention reflexology works everything. It is one of the most potent physical touch modalities out there on the planet. And so many different areas, regions, religions have laid claim to it, which I will talk about in other segments with the history of reflexology. But today we're on structure. So if your foot is not movable, then you need to give it a lot of love because it's very, very, very important. So one of my favorite ways to start out reflexology is to start with the structure. And I mentioned the spine, which that's what I do at the end of the structure. First, I start out with the hip. So you have this bony protuberance right here. And some people, it really sticks out. So I'm gonna show it over here too. There's a little bony protuberance. See, mine just sticks out just a smidge. But some people, it sticks out a lot. And if it's sticking out a lot, that means your hips need a lot of love. I mentioned that reflexology is specific point work. So if somebody's just massaging it, they're not giving that energy zone the quality of touch that it needs to fully relax, release, and heal. And reflexology is such a blessing when it comes to massage therapy in general because it works for 48 hours. So a lot of times you get a massage, you feel wonderful, you drive home, the life steps in, you get stressed out, the massage slowly starts to dissipate. With reflexology, it continues to work for 48 hours. So be kind to yourself after reflexology. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself, eating right, drinking plenty of water, stretching, Walking's actually good because then that shows you where you have pain discomfort, but I'm on the hips right now. So when I start out structural reflexology for the physical form, muscular skeletal, I always start with the hips. I like to use my thumbs. I don't know if you can quite see this, but maybe, maybe this one here. So I want to put my thumb right onto that bony protuberance and I want to hold it and I'll have the client breathe into it like three times. Nice, slow, big, deep breaths. And then as they breathe, you feel the tissue dissipate. So I'm going to do that one more time. I'm just going to hold it. melting. If you can breathe into it while the therapist is holding it, allow it to relax, release. You can slowly, as you can see with my thumb, it's gliding all the way up to my shoulder area. So we talked about spine, talked about hips, now I'm at shoulder. The shoulder, some people get like a lot of calluses there or um, they have different issues with the bone, and that can be shoes, that could be hereditary, that could just be your shoulders are really messed up. So, I'm gonna apply some pressure into the shoulder region. Breathe into it and relax. This is another reason why reflexology is such a great modality because you can do it to yourself. It's really hard to work your neck or your low back because you're applying pressure and trying to relax. With the foot, you can do so much. And I have absolutely healed so many things in my life with reflexology. So I'm almost done with this particular segment, but please remember, this is one of the most important. How many of us have structural issues? We all do. So start out with the hip, find that bony protuberance, work it, breathe into it. You can knead it, you can hold it, you can tap it. You do lots of things to get that energy to open up. And then as it does, slide up to the shoulder point. Same thing, hold it, breathe into it, tap it, knead it, do whatever it needs to fully let go. 
Then my favorite part. This is gonna blow your mind. When I do reflexology and when I taught reflexology, I told a lot of my students, I can spend 45 minutes to almost an hour on the neck points, which is just your toes. And people are like, what? what? Like, like, you've only got this much space. How, how on earth can you spend 45 minutes to an hour on just that? Well, how many of us have major chronic neck issues? A majority. So, in the toes, it starts out that you have your neck. Then it goes to your sinuses. Then it goes to your brain. In your big toe, you have a little bit of your tonsils, you have your thymus, you have your thyroid, you have your pituitary, you have your pineal. At the very, very top, those of you who have trouble sleeping, these are your little sleep buttons. That's your brain. Calm your brain down before you go to sleep. It'll be amazing. You have a sleep button over here. One thing I do, and I've been doing it before I even knew what reflexology was, I'd be in bed and I would just rub my toes together. Just rub them. I didn't realize I was invoking the sleep button. Sometimes our intuition is stronger than we know. So tap into it. I'm almost done, but pay attention. This is so important. Hips, shoulders, neck, and spine. If you can open up those four parts of your reflexology, energetic, physical zones, you're gonna be able to work everything else. And until you get all of that open, it's gonna be really hard to get to the digestive system. It's gonna be really hard to get to some of the endocrine issues. It's gonna be really hard to dig deep into those emotional levels. Some of those energetic zones, the meridians, the, the zone theory, which reflexology is based off of. So start with the structure. Soak your feet, get them pliable. Start with your hip point. Rub that, go up to your shoulder point, and then make sure you work every single toe. Remember I said, neck, sinus, brain. So if you're working every single toe, you can work it side to side. You can stretch them, roll them, flex them, hold them. Remember, reflexology is specific point work. You work every single one. Yes, this is a short video, but you can work each one for 10 minutes each. And then wrap it around to the spine cervicals, thoracic gets a double, lumbar, sacrum. I seriously cannot stress this enough. Taking care of your structure and taking care of your feet is so important. Yes, there's hand reflexology. Yes, there's ear reflexology. Yes, there's head reflexology. But what I have found in my 19 years of practicing the modality, lots of clients. Hospital work, 15 minutes, four clients every hour. I have found that working the structure works the entire body and opens up your physical form. So please, please take care of your feet. I'm gonna leave this with one last thing on essential oils. I have Isabel Hutton chart here. She's my favorite. And so we have here talking about skeletal brain nervous system and all of the different essential oils that help with that. I'm not going to name them all because it'll take too much time. But you can look below and find out what essential oil is going to help out with your skeletal system compared to your muscular system, compared to your nervous system. I really hope this video was helpful. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ology Podcast. I appreciate it. Peace, love, and light.